Hello everyone, my name is Nav and I work for Vetric. Some of you may know me from the UGM last year where I did a very short presentation on some tips and tricks around material surface and setting up your job setup sheet. But today we're looking at a rotary project and specifically a V-carving rotary project for beginners. As you can see over here, I've got this totem pole, which looks really, really cool in my opinion. You've got a happy face on this side and a sad face on this side. Now, it may look like this is quite complex for a beginner, but this is actually quite a simple 2D design in theory, and I'll show you how to make that. I'll go through that step by step with you, and eventually we'll get to something like this. Okay, everyone, so let's start off with an introduction to rotary machining. So let's have a look at our first slide. So what is rotary machining? Well, rotary machining is machining in the fourth axis, which is not always the case. You can actually machine in the third axis as well. However, you can do full fourth axis machining. So you can do the X axis, the Y axis, Z, A and B, uh, sometimes simultaneously. Whereas we here at Vectric use three axis, which is almost the same. But what we do is we utilize one of the axis to wrap around. So for example, we will wrap the Y axis to the A axis or the X axis to the A axis. Or similarly, we can do it to the B axis as well. But this is still importantly three axis. Now, Rotary machining can be as simple as simply creating a round blank out of a square or rectangular block. So if you imagine over here, if we come over to this image, if you imagine you've got a square block of material here or a rectangular block of material, you could uh, use a rounding tool pad and you can make that nice and smooth, make it round. Perhaps you want to make some chair legs, perhaps you want to make a pillar for uh, something decorative. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at here as well. Uh, rotary machining can also be used to create intricate, precise and accurate cuts for 3D reliefs, V-carving or complex design that can be mapped to a rotary axis. And this is an example of one that I'll be showing you how to do today. So you can see here, this is quite a complex design. But when you see, as we'll see later on when we actually come to design this, it's actually quite a simple design. But rotary machining is quite powerful in that it lets you create very complex looking designs that are actually very simple in theory to create. Uh, rotary machining involves setting up your machine and file to wrap the X or Y to another axis, typically A or B, and I touched on this earlier, but we'll be going over that in further detail when we come to actually design our rotary uh, project today. And your material or blank is placed into a chuck where one end of your blank sits in the jaws of a headstock, which can hold your blank in place. And just to show you what that is, if we come over to the image over here and you can see I've got headstock labeled here. If you see these black parts here, that is essentially the jaws here. And if you see this black tool on the bottom here sitting underneath it, we can place this into the hole here and we can turn it and that will lock our material in place. And then similarly, similarly at the other end, what we'll have is the tailstock and the tailstock will engage the uh, material block or the blank in the back end of it. So what will happen is, is this is a very sharp point here and you can turn this manually with a lever over here. And as you turn it, this will go further and further forward until you can engage uh, the actual blank or material. And what you'll usually do is mark a center point. So if you mark an X, so corner to corner on your square or rectangular blank, and then that's where you'll engage the tailstock is where the two points meet in the middle. So you know that it's engaged right in the middle where you want it to be. And then the headstock also has a motor attached. So inside of here is actually a motor. So when you actually come to start machining your rotary projects, you'll see that this is going to be turning of its own volition. And this will be turning as the tool comes from the top here and engages. And this is how it achieves the effects that you have over here. Now in Vectric software, importantly, what we do is we actually machine the project flat and then wrap it around the axis that is set up in the job setup sheet. And I'll show you uh, that in action a little bit later on. Now, rotary machining may seem complex, but it's not as hard as it seems, especially with CNC machines, which allow for accurate and feature driven designs. So what is the difference between a rotary uh, machining project versus a lathe machining project? So with a lathe, a lathe refers to a tool which spins a block of material about an axis of rotation with a tool constantly engaged. This results in symmetrical machining while the lathe rotates individually in X, Y or Z planes. Now the stock, or in this case the material, or sometimes you'll hear, hear him refer to it as a blank, uh, will always rotate while the tool is engaged. So you can machine the profile of the stock and vary the design along the length, but it will not vary the design in a different axis. So a good example of this is a bowling pin.
If you think about a bowling pin, if you imagine you've got your blank set up in here and it's spinning around with the tools constantly engaged, you can create a bowling pin quite nicely with that because it's constantly turning the material as the tool's engaged and you can carve out uh, something like this where you have a symmetrical shape. Whereas with rotary machining, you can do something a bit more powerful in that you can actually start to design quite complex features into that shape. So for example, if you look over here, we've still got a bowling pin, but this time we've actually got some features in it. So we've got like a face, this looks like a tiki, unlike, uh, not unlike the one that we've got to look forward to today. And you can see this one is, as well here, you've got some quite deep carving. So it lasts for a lot of uh, feature-driven uh, detailing here. So as I just mentioned, rotary machining can allow for precise machining movements where you can make precise, accurate designs, for example, a face or 3D relief on the back side of a bowling pin and a name on the front. So for example, let's say you, you have a friend who's very much into bowling, you could always create them their own custom pins and have their names on it, or perhaps a company's name engraved into the bowling pin as well. And Rotary, unlike a lathe, allows for V-carving 3D reliefs to be wrapped and to utilize 3D models, as you can see over here, but as we'll also see in the project as we start to make it later on. And just to give you an idea of what you can do with Rotary, if you have a look at the next slide here, you can see that we've got some example user Rotary projects. So I thought these were really great, and I found these on the uh, Vectric user forum. If you're not on the forum, I highly suggest you get on it. If you're already part of the forum, I highly suggest you go look at these projects because these are amazing. So this is a Rotary Puppy on the left by Brian, which I think is phenomenal. The amount of detail he's got in this is great. And then similarly on the right-hand side, we've got Dale's walking sticks, which are really, really nice. You can see he's got a lot of detail on these and each one's got a different design. I think that really looks really, really, really cool. And it has a practical use as well. So with that small demonstration and introduction to rotary machining, now let's have a look at making our own project and having a go at making one of our own rotary beginner projects ourselves. Okay, so this is actually what we're gonna be aiming to make today. So this is our rotary V-carving Tiki Tone Pole. As you can see on one side, I've got a happy face, albeit a very mean looking happy face. And on the other side, I've got a sad face. Now I'm gonna take you through some of the design elements I use to make this. And even though it looks like quite a complex design, if I go over to my 2D view, you can see that it's actually not that complex at all. And even if this does look complex to you, don't worry. I'm going to show you some really great tips and tricks on how you can make this nice and easy. But before we do that, just know that this file will be provided to you so you can cut this out yourself. Now, of course, you're uh, able to make any edits that you would like to make if you want to make it larger, if you want to make it smaller, if you want to make some different design choices, maybe you want to get rid of the tiers, for example. So please feel free to download that. That comes with the UGM pack this year. So don't worry if you don't want to design your own or you just want to have a go at cutting one of these first just to see what it looks like, we'll give you this file as well. But for now, let's have a look at making our own version of this for ourselves. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up a new sheet. Okay, everyone, so today, for all the British people in the chat for the UGM, I'm going to be your Neil Buchanan. If you get that reference, I'll be impressed. And for all the people from North America, I'm going to be your Bob Ross. And if you're from the rest of the planet, whichever childhood art hero that was in <laughs> your part of the world. So the first thing we're going to do is click Create a New File. And I'm going to set this up as a rotary job, 10 inches in length, 3.5 inches in diameter. Of course, my units will also be in inches. My Z0 position is going to be off the cylinder axis. Now this is important because I don't know that my actual material is even all the way around. So I'm going to make sure it's on the cylinder axis to achieve the most accurate cut I can. XY dating position in the bottom left hand corner. I'm not going to use an offset. My orientation is going to be along the X axis, which means I'm wrapping the Y axis. And in terms of wandering resolution, I've got it set to very high and I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now with our job setup complete, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a borderline for our sheet. So I'm gonna click on the draw add, uh, the draw line tool, and I wanna come down to about Y10. Now, as you can see, my, my mouse isn't quite accurate because of my hand movements, so I'm gonna use the tools available to me. I'm gonna to go to the next point, and here in this Y box, I'm gonna put 10, and what you'll see is when I click add, it's respected that Y position of 10 because that's where I want to start from. And now I've got a line that I can draw. So if I drag my mouse across, I'm going to snap to this point here. You can see it snaps at the edge here. Click on the left click, 
press space on the keyboard so I can draw a new line if I wanted to. But for now, I'm going to close this form out. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to mirror this to the bottom of the sheet. So I'm going to keep that selected. Come over to the Transform Objects menu. I'm going to click Mirror Selected Objects. And I'm going to make sure that Flip About Job Center is selected. I'm going to flip this vertically. And there you go. Now, suddenly, we've got a border within which we're going to make our design. So let's get working on our design. Now, a really useful tool before we move any further is the guidelines. You can see them at the top and the left-hand side of the screen here on the rulers. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to drag this out, holding down the left mouse click. And this is going to give me a guideline, which is snapping. You can see this. It's snapping to the middle of my sheet here, which is what I want. So I'm going to use this as a guideline because I'm going to uh, use this to work around in my sheet. Now, you can also use a guideline. You can also just create a line if you wanted to as well. So, for example, if I get rid of this guideline here, I could just... Come to the middle here. If I hover my mouse over the middle of the job, it's snapped to it here. And if I come all the way back down, I can snap to the middle point here. And I've got a line that I can now use to make my design around. And you'll see why this line is important in just a moment, because I'm going to start using this to do what we did earlier, where I'm going to create half of the design and then flip it on the other side to save us a lot of time. So with that in mind, let's get started. The first thing I'm actually going to design is the eye. So I'm actually going to create a line, but I'm going to do something a little bit different that you may have seen before. So Becky, actually, you all know Becky from Vectric. She's taught me this trick. So if you click anywhere on the sheet, because don't worry about that for the moment, because we're going to move this around. Click again, so you've made your line, and we're going to go back on itself. And then hover over the line you made originally, click on that. Perfect. And then we've got our line. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to click that line and click N for November on the keyboard and we're going to go into node editing mode and we're just going to zoom in just a little bit. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn these lines into curves. So while hovering over this, I'm going to click B to make this into a Bezier curve. You can see that there. Now I've got two handles I can use to move this. And with my mouse, I'm going to click around this and drag a box, box around it. So that's the left click. And now you can see these uh, handles are now red. And what that means is if I move one, it'll move the other one as well. So I'm going to drag that out. I'm going to try and make an eye shape here. So I'm going to just drag that out a little bit like that. I'm going to do the same with this line. So while it's clicked, B on the keyboard for Bezier curves. I'm going to highlight that again. Both of them highlight so I can move them at the same time. And I'm going to try and make an organic looking eye shape. So. I don't think that looks too bad. I think it looks quite nice. I'm just going to hit escape on the keyboard to come out of node editing. Now, you can keep this sharp corner if you want to, but if you do want to get rid of it, you can press N on the keyboard. And on this point here where you're hovering over it, you can press S to smooth that out and you'll get a shape like that. So really it comes out to preference. If you prefer having that kind of sharper edge look to it, that is quite nice. Uh, but if you want to have a smoother shape, you can hit S on the keyboard and then you can move these handles around Try and manipulate that shape, shape a little bit and you can make some different looking eyes. But for now, I'm actually quite happy with how it originally looked. So I'm going to keep it like that for now. All right, so that is our eye done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the tools available on software to offset that. So if we go to offset selected vectors, and I'm actually going to offset that outwards by 0.125. I'm just going to have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so it hasn't respected the sharp corners and that's because I didn't choose the option to respect the sharp corner. So I'm going to select that again. I'm going to delete this vector, go back onto the eyeball, offset, and there we are, beautiful. I've got my eyeball now. So this is going to start taking shape very shortly. And we're going to be using this tool quite a lot. So do keep this one in mind. So there you go. We have an eyeball already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these together. So if I click on one, hold shift, click on the other one, right click, I'm going to group those objects. So now, I can move them both around at the same time and I've got my eyeball ready to go. Okay, so next thing, let's have a look at making our nose. Okay, so to make the nose, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same strategy that we used earlier with the line. So we're going to come in and I'm going to make a line on this guideline that I've got for myself here. I'm going to come down, back up again. And I'm just going to close that out and then I'm going to select that line. And again, node editing mode, B on the keyboard for a Bezier curves while 
being on that line. Pull that out. There we go. I'll do the same on this side as well. And then there we go. Pull that out as well. And you can see we're starting to make a bit of a nose shape here. Now, what we can actually do is also make a similar shape, or we can just borrow this one. So if you don't want to make another shape, you can hit escape on the keyboard to get our node editing. What we're going to do, we're going to select this shape, and we're going to actually move that just a little bit across. And you'll notice that what you can do is if I hold control, is that I can actually click on the middle again, and this becomes a circle. Now what this is indicating is a rotation, so it's a point rotation, and you can actually grab that and you can move that to whatever you want. So I'm going to put it right at the bottom here, on the very bottom of the nose here. And then if I hold control while this vector is selected, and then if I drag it to the left, you'll notice that I'll make a copy of it. But what you can also do is grab this corner and you can rotate it on that point that I just made to try and make the shape of a nose, which I think is quite cool. And Becky taught me this trick actually uh, while designing this, which I thought, thought was really cool. And you can, if you ever need to pick up that point again, you can just click on it and move it back to where it was, pop it back in the middle there as well. But I thought that was a really, really cool trick because that way you can uh, actually get a new set of vectors simply just by rotating it and holding control on the keyboard and creating a copy of it, which I think is quite nice. And we'll be using that a little bit later on as well. So let's have a look at try and make this into an actual nose now. So I'm just going to rotate it just a little bit more, make it a little bit more straight. And oh, I'm just, I uh, held control while doing that, which made another copy. I'm going to delete that. This time I'm not going to hold control. And I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Here we go. Drag that back up. And I'm just going to let it overlap a little bit just there. And I'm going to size this down. I'm going to hold shift while being on this handle at the corner here. I'm going to size this down just a little bit and pull that in. And you can see this is starting to make a bit of a nose shape, which is what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start trimming, trimming away some of the lines that we don't need. Uh, so I'm going to use this tool here, the interactive trim tool. And I'm going to come in I'm going to get rid of the lines I don't need. I don't need this one. I don't need this one. This one. And you want to watch out for stuff like this. So you want to zoom in and make sure that you're getting everything that you need to get rid of. Now I'm going to sort this vector out here in just a moment. You can see there's still a bit of overlap there. A little bit of overlap there. Oh, went a bit too far there. Let's see if I can just cut that line. Actually, we don't need to worry about that for the moment because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this vector in a minute anyway. I'll show you what I mean. So if I select this vector now, so you can see it's all one joined vector because I trimmed it and it joined at the same time. I'm going to make some edits here to try and make our life a bit easier. So what I want to do is first I'm going to move it to be a bit more central on that line. Okay. Now I'm going to cut this vector in half because I'm going to flip this to the other side. So what I'm going to do is go to node editing mode. I'm going to pop a point just here. So I'm going to insert a point. I'm going to cut that vector. And then you see this point just at the top here. I'm going to cut this vector as well. And now this side has become its own separate vector. So if I hit escape, you're going to see if I select this, I can now delete that. And the beautiful thing about that is now I can just select this, go over to my mirror tool, flip horizontal and there we have a nose now if I join this up if I click these right click join and close vectors of the line that is now our nose and then what you can do is you can offset offset that outwards or inwards oh we've got a warning here to say that we've got some intersections so let's have a look at the vector validator to see what intersections we have so it looks like we've got an intersection just here at the bottom so let's have a look at that, shall we? Ah, you can see here that we've got an intersection here. That's great. This is the great thing about the vector validator. It points out things like this that you may not otherwise see. So let's have a look at fixing that, shall we? So if we come in and let's just get rid of these lines, that should join her all up. I'm going to have a re-evaluation of this again. Let's have a look if we can offset it this time. There we go. Okay, so 
you can see here it's got a bit of a point here that it hasn't made but if I go to that if I join the vectors with a line you can see it makes a straight line which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world when it comes to this but what you can do is if you want to point nose again is if you go node editing you can actually just grab this anchor here and you can move it up and then you've got your point if you do want your point like that as well and that is our nose and you can see what I'm doing here it's a lot of repeating the same thing which is making a very simple design flipping it to the other side joining it back up again so we've got a nice looking design so I'm just going to group these together while I'm at it so I've got my nose ready to go all right so let's have a look at some of the other parts of the face all right so what we're going to do now is I'm going to make the mouth so again pop up to my draw line tool go from the center here I'm just going to make a very rough looking mouth it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just looking for some basic details and a basic shape of a mouth and I think that's pretty good so far don't worry we're going to make this look very good in just a moment so again N on the keyboard now this time I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm going to hover over this point and I'm going to click S on the keyboard S for super good design <laughs> so I'm going to hit S and you can see that's now smoothed out that part and I can now adjust this with the uh, handles here to try and make a smoother mouth I'm going to do the same with this so S on the keyboard S on the keyboard and you can already see it's now making more of a mouth shape and I can try and adjust that a little bit maybe I want to make an angry looking mouth maybe I'm looking like a happy looking mouth so you can adjust this as you need to make it look how you would like it to so for example if you want to give it a bit more definition here you can do that as well now I'm actually quite happy with that that looks pretty good to me right now so what I'm going to do is again let's mirror that flip it over to the other side now of course what you can actually do is design everything on this side and just flip it over to the other side later but the reason I'm going to do it now is because I'm going to offset this inwards to create the lips for the mouth so once again hold shift click right click join with the line that's now one vector I'm going to offset that inwards this time and now we've got a set of lips now how are we going to design the teeth? Well, I'll, I'll show you a little trick that you can use to, to make the teeth, which I think is quite cool, actually. So what you want to do is you want to create a sort of L shape. So if you click anywhere like this, kind of make an angle. So maybe like an odd 60 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can make an L shape like this. Okay, so right click there to get rid of that menu. Now I'm going to go to node editing. Now I'm going to smooth this line, so S on the keyboard again. Now, crucially, this is the interesting part so if I hit escape come over to this vector and I'm going to choose the offset tool I'm going to offset that inwards left you can also go outwards if you want to as well and this time actually I'm not going to create sharp corners so let me delete that vector let's try that again without the sharp corners uh, I'm still getting a bit of a sharp corner here so what I might do is actually go outwards instead so if I get outwards let's see if we can there we go that's that's quite nice we've got a nice curve there all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this one double click it I'm going to move it just a tad closer I'm going to try and make a bit of a two shape so if I select these together there's a bunch of tools over here that you can join vectors with I'm going to choose this one join vectors by moving endpoints to a common point and you can see it's got a curved point at the end there I'm going to click that once more to join these and now you've got a sort of tooth shape now I can see that the ends are a little bit sharp so I'm gonna hit node editing mode I'm just gonna S to smooth that S to smooth that one and at the top again S to smooth S to smooth and I'm just gonna have a look at editing out this just a little bit just to give it a bit more definition here okay and you may be thinking well now that does not look like a tooth to me well don't you worry in just a moment you'll see how you can make these into a set of teeth so if you just place that there for example and you drag this one out and you make it just a little bit bigger so if you hold shift make that just a, a little bit bigger and you can pop that next to it you can see I've got another copy ready to go over here as well let me just move that rotation point back I'm gonna select this one move it across and you can start to see how you can kind of build up a row of teeth this way by just moving one across making the other one bigger each time and you can eventually start making a kind of tooth shape that you can kind of use to 
make the top row of teeth. And we can use a similar technique to make the front tooth here. So we just perhaps we bring, make a shape like this, a very square looking shape, I suppose. And then click here. And now we've got our shape, N for node editing, S to smooth out those corners a little bit, maybe bring them in a little bit, maybe not as cartoonish as we want it to be like that. And there you go, you've got a basic tooth shape there. And then you can just offset that inwards or outwards, whichever you prefer, whichever gets you the best result. Now, let's say you go inwards and you've got the sharp corners. Again, like I did earlier, you can just node edit, hit S on the corner. You can also convert these to curves if you've got far too many of these nodes as well. But for now, I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna select both of these together, go into uh, join close vectors by moving endpoints to a common point and you have a tooth. Now you may be wondering why am I making sure to close all these vectors off? Well it's actually because we're using v-carving and the important thing about v-carving is that you need closed vectors. I mean you can still v-carve on a line but you would for this design you would need closed vectors which is why it's so important that we have these vectors uh, like this how we've got it designed at the moment where they're all closed off. All right, so what you can do with these now is you can actually group these together. So I can just group these objects and then while they're selected, go into the mirror tool, flip them horizontally, and now you have a row of teeth. Simple as that. Okay, so for the next couple minutes, I'm just gonna fast forward this a little bit as I start designing. Uh, more of this file art using the exact same tricks that I've just showed you a minute ago. So don't worry, you're not going to miss out on anything. You'll be able to follow it along. Um, but we're just going to fast through, uh, forward through this next section so we can uh, get to the more interesting parts of the tool pathing and making some of the other adjustments to this file. So I'm just going to start designing some of the other parts of the file right now. Okay, so now I'm actually going to look at designing the plume, which is one of the more complex parts of this design. However, again, we're going to use the tools available to us to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to click on the center line here, come back down, come back up again to meet that line again. Perfect. And I'm going to start designing our basic plume. So with our vector selected, you can see it's highlighted in pink there. N for node editing mode, as usual, B for Bezier curves. So let's highlight those drag those out. Let's try and make it a little bit more sharp towards the bottom and a bit rounder towards the top. Same with the other side, so B, Bezier curves, pull that out, try and match that shape there. Similarly, what you could do is if you don't want to do it by hand like that, you could just create the vector this side, mirror it across the other side using the uh, mirror selected objects tool. So is that way of doing it as well. But I'm showing you a method in which you can design it yourself this way as well. So that's our basic plume. So what we're going to do now is use the tool that we did earlier, which is we're going to start rotating this using the rotation tool. So if you remember, I clicked, if I just highlight my 
uh, plume again, clicked in that middle point, and you'll notice you get this circle now, which is a rotation point. I'm going to pop that down the bottom, and then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard because I'm going to make a copy of this plume. And with this top left anchor point, I'm just going to drag that out so I can rotate it. And you can see you can quite easily make a plume shape like that. And if I select this one again, there we are. You can see how that can start to build up. And then you can add a little bit of flair to it because then what you can do is you can start offsetting these inwards or outwards if you like as well. So you can offset that inwards, you can start offset this one inwards, and then offset this one inwards. And then what you can start to do is cut away some of these lines that you don't need. And you get this really nice shape of a plume in the middle of the forehead there. Now obviously we need to adjust the design here to make the eyebrows a little bit smaller perhaps, so you can give the plume a bit more strength and make it a bit larger. And you can also take some some more designs here so what we'll do is actually we'll group these up if we select all of our vectors here i'm going to group these up together and then i'm going to move that up a little bit and you can make something really nice just add a little bit of flair to it and click the circle draw circle tool and just drag that out a little bit there we go and then we can Offset that again inwards, you can tell I really like this tool. <laughs> and there you go, you got a nice, you know, it's, it's all coming together now. You can see how you can quite simply just start adding in other elements to build up the design. And then you may be thinking, okay, well, you know, what what do we do from here? You know, this looks like a quite simplistic design, but as you can see, when you'll see the end result, this ends up looking quite complex with the tools that we have to hand. So again, I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a box around this design because then I'm going to make a second version of it on the other side and I'm going to make it a sad face. So what we'll do is if I just highlight all my vectors with control A, I'm going to group all these together. I actually don't need this center line necessarily anymore. Actually, if I ungroup again, I can get rid of this center line. I don't need this anymore. So that's control A, right click, group objects, right? I've got everything ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is create a mirrored copy on the other side. So what I can do is select these, flip horizontal, or I can simply just hold control and drag this off to the side here, snap it back on with the edge here, and I've got another set of vectors. So again, you've got options to do that. So you can either control, hold control to make a copy of this, or you can use the tool here to mirror the selected objects as well. But again, I'm just going to fast forward this just a little bit because I'm going to start making some edits to this to try and make this look like more of a sad face than a happy face. So I will see you guys in just a moment. Okay, and as you can see now, we've pretty much got our design ready to go. So we've got our uh, main uh, happy face, and then we've got a sad face off to the side here. And as you can see, all I did was I basically took the mouth and I grouped it together so the lips are grouped together. And then I turned them using the uh, anchor point. Let me just fix this up just a little bit over here. You can notice that the tooth is just popping into the lip a little bit. So let me just drag that down a little bit, move that down. There we go. Maybe I just need to readjust they readjust the size here as well. So let's just size that down just a little bit. 
but you can see how all the designs coming together now where you know i've managed to get this mouth copy it across over here flip it upside down get rid of the tongue and then it creates this kind of sad expression and same with the eyes all i did was i clicked on them double click grabbed on the blue anchors and just turned it rotated the eyes inwards to make more of a sad look to give it more of that effect so uh, just some really simple tricks and tips that you can use to try and uh, make this project so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to group all this together so we've got our boxes around it as well if you recall i drew a tri uh, rectangle around them earlier i'm going to group them all together and then what i'm going to do is while well, it's selected hit nine on the keyboard to rotate it nine again and there we are i've got my uh, design ready to now put on this sheet and you may be thinking well why are you rotating the design now well the reason is is because we're actually going to be wrapping it this way so when this comes to toolpath it's actually going to be wrapping it this way so while we do design it vertically we need to make sure we flip it at the end because we're going along x but we're wrapping around y and y is this way so we need to make sure the design is also facing this way and we also need to make sure that our design fits onto our sheet so the way we're going to do that is this simply by looking in the bottom left hand corner of our job here you can see our job dimensions are down here in the left hand corner width is or our x is 10 inches our height is 10.9956 and our depth is 1.75 inches now the main thing we're going to need to take into account is these two numbers here the 10.9956 for the height and the 10 inches for the width so i'm going to come up to set selected object size so i'm going to take this value put this in the height because that is the correct height if you recall from the bottom left hand corner and we're going to make uh width 10 inches we don't want to link the x and y make sure that is not checked hit apply there you go your design is now the right size for your sheet and then you can simply drag it across onto your sheet ready for toolpathing but now i'm going to go ahead and go and switch to one that i made earlier and this will be the one that is going to be provided in your ugm pack okay so you can see that this is the design that i made earlier and this is the one that you're going to get with your ugm pack and you can see i spent a lot more time with this one adding some more detail you can see around the nose here i've added a little bit of an indent there to make it look a bit more appealing and you can see i've made some changes with the plume i've added some extra plumes in there and I've also made the flames look a bit more natural. You'll also notice that down the sides, or what would be the side of one of the sides, I've got these circles and these diamond shapes, and you're probably wondering why they're there. Well, two reasons. They're actually there for uh, toolpathing purposes, and you'll see why, because there's a problem we can run into, and these help us get around it, but also for decorative reasons as well. So speaking of toolpathing, let's head over to our toolpath menu. So we're going to check our material setup and make sure it's all correct. 3.5 is correct for my diameter my xy datum hasn't changed i'm keeping it there my z0 is in the center of the cylinder i don't need to worry about a gap outside the model so i'm not using any 3d release on models here and these clearance values these rapid z gaps above the material and the home start position and the z gap above material they are relevant for my machine so please make sure that if you're using this file to change these so that they are relevant for your particular machine and you can always check that and if you need any help with that please do refer to your machine manufacturer okay so i'm going to go through some of the pre-made toolpaths i've got here i've actually got a rounding toolpath now if you pop up to the uh gadgets up here we're going to go to wrapping and we're going to go to create rounding toolpath now what i did here is because my blank as you'll see later on in the video was square to begin with i wanted to round it off and then i was going to machine onto it so what I was going to do is optimize raster. So I was going to get rid of the corners and created a rounding toolpath. And you can see here my cylinder diameter is 3.5 inches. You can actually make this a little bit bigger if you want to make sure that you give it a little bit of room for error. But this is what I use to create my rounding toolpath. And there's actually a really great tutorial on our website about how to use a rounding toolpath. And I highly suggest you watch it if you have any questions about the rounding toolpath. But this is there so I can get rid of these corners and I can have a nice round blank to work with so for my rounding toolpath i actually used an end mill 0.245 end mill in this case uh, but you may have a different tool to hand so please make sure that if you are going to use a rounding toolpath to reflect that in your toolpath of course if you're not using a rounding toolpath make sure to delete this one 
in regards to my V carve, so I, for the faces, I selected all the, the vectors for the faces. Now you'll notice that currently I haven't got these shapes selected here, but I've got a separate V carve toolpath for that. And in this case, I'm using a V bit, a 90 degree V bit, a one and a half inch 90 degree V bit in this case, which is a nice big tool. And it's gonna get me some good detail on this. In regards to the edges here, so the shapes that I've got along the edge, Again, I'm using the exact same V bit. I'm using a 90 degree V bit with one and a half inch. And that's, I'm using that V bit particularly because I'm not going to get some really good detail out of it. And this is quite a large piece, but it's also going to give me quite nice depths, especially in the areas like this, like the eyes and the mouth, uh, where you've got these kind of large cavities and the plumes as well. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment when I show you the preview. I've also got a profile cut out. Now you may need this if you've actually got any codes, for example. So for example, you could use these lines here uh, in your toolpath to actually, or in your design rather, to make a toolpath for a profile so you can make some coves or even to cut this out at the very end. Of course, you can manually cut this out if you would like to as well, but the option is there for a profile toolpath if you would like to cut out your design. So. With that said, let's pop over and have a look at what this is gonna look like. So if I just preview all my toolpaths, so this is the rounding one first. And as I mentioned earlier, what the software does is it'll cut this flat or unwrapped and then wrap it around. And as you can see, we've got some really nice detail out of that because it's a V carving. Now, what you could do, and I'll show you an example of this afterwards in the video afterwards, where you could run a pocket along all of this area and then do a V carving just on some of the facial features. And what you'll get with that is more of a flat round shape and you won't have some of the depth that you have here, but you can still get some very interesting looking effects from that as well. But I think this looks really, really nice. You can see how the V carving's got in there and made some really nice details, especially with the plume, for example, you've got this nice line in the middle here and it comes up either way to the edge. And I think that looks really, really nice really happy with the eyes there as well and we've got some really good detail with the tears but what i wanted to point out in particular was the sides now if you recall earlier i said that these served more of a purpose than just being designed and i'll show you why if i reset the preview and i just run the faces so there we are it's unwrapped at the moment and it wraps it around again in just a moment there we are you'll see we've got this kind of seam or this edge at the end here or between the faces Now the reason why that happens is because it's a v bit we're using the v bits reaching the end of that toolpath which ends at a point here same with the other side and what that does it creates this edge here which doesn't look that great at the moment but the great thing about adding simple things like shapes down the side here is that it can help eliminate that and also still keep it looking like it's actually naturally part of the Tiki Totem. So already you can see that drastically changes it. It looks much more natural, much more like it belongs there. Um, and there's, you know, you can change the shapes if you want to in this file, when you get this file, uh, you can maybe change these to some other shapes. Maybe you want to orientate them a different way. Maybe you want to offset them. Uh, you can do many things with this. And also another good thing to point out is that you'll notice that some of my vectors are off the edge here and that's something really important because what it's actually doing, the software knows that these are off the edge, but it knows it's a rotary job. So it will automatically wrap these around to this side. And you'll see that in the preview because you see here, this is the edge on the happy face where these vectors are hanging off and yet they have still been respected on the other side. And similarly, let's say if you made this design so this happy face was just all of this sheet and the sad face was off of the sheet, the software would still respect that because it knows that you've got vectors off of the sheet and it'll wrap it around. Uh, to borrow a word of one of the great developers that we have here, uh, Vetric, Greg, uh, it automatically <laughs> does it for you. So that is our tool pass ready to go on the machine. So now we need to actually save it. And when we come to save it in version 11, Many of you may be familiar with this. If you haven't got version 11 yet, I'll quickly take you through this. We currently now have a machine configuration tool. So this is where you can actually download and set up your machine configuration. You can also set up a custom machine configuration. And when you do that, we'll do our best to make sure that you get the right post processor for your machine. Now, of course, if you're setting up a custom machine and you have the right post processor on your um, 
laptop or your PC, you can always add it in here by clicking this button here. And this is the one that I need. In this case, you can see this is a ShopBot wrap Y, which means I'm wrapping the Y axis to the A axis. And it's very important that you know which axis that you're wrapping to and that you have the right post processor to actually wrap that axis with. Uh, so please make sure that when you come to save this toolpath off, if you're wrapping in the X or the Y axis, that you know which specific axis that you're wrapping and make sure you have the right compatible post to actually wrap it with so it cuts correctly when you go to machine it. But with that said, now I'm going to save the toolpath. So I'm just going to click Save Toolpath and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I made sure I've got the right uh, post process selected. I'm just going to call this one Tiki Totem. And I've already got one here from earlier, but I'm going to overwrite that one. And now that is ready to go machine. Okay, so now with our design phase out of the way, we can now look at actually cutting out our design. So let's have a look at cutting it out on a machine. Okay, so you can see here that I'm marking the center line with Becky's help here. So putting across across the top of the blank so we know where we're going to put our tail stock into in just a moment's time. And you can see Greg is just putting an extra bit of material here. This is Greg, one of our developers, uh, who's made the software as great as it is. And he's just putting a little bit of extra material on top there. So when we put the blank into the woodchuck, that it's going to hold on to that a little extra bit of material there because the actual material we've got at the moment is quite wide and so we use that little extra bit so we can fit inside the headstock and we can start cutting our material. So the moment we're discussing where we're going to uh, zero our Y and our X off, so we're currently moving the machine to place. And you can see now we're using the touch plate and I've got Becky assisting me here, helping me actually move the tool into place while I held the touch plate in place. And now we're going to move the machine into place when it's ready to do so. But before we do that, we've now started to put our tailstock in the right place. We're putting our blank into the headstock. Greg's tightening up there so it's nice and tight, so it's holding it very, very stably. And then I'm going to turn this lever here behind the tailstock and we're going to engage our material blank where we marked it earlier in the center line, which is why we used that rule early with Becky, if you remember, to mark where the center line was going to be. Now, of course, you want to make sure everything is level. So as you can see here, Greg has made sure that everything is all good to go, nice and level. And again, we just check it on the other side as well. And we're looking good so far. Now, what we're doing here is we're actually marking where our X is and where we're going to actually get our tool to engage from in terms of X. So we're actually measuring our blank here and measuring where our X is actually going to need to go. And again, we always make sure that it is level. And as you can see here, we're moving our machine into the correct position while accounting for the space that we'll need to move over the headstock or the jaws of the headstock there as well. And as usual, before we cut any of our designs, we always like to go over our toolpaths just one more time to make sure that they're correct. And what we're doing here is we're going over our rounding toolpath. So we're looking at where it's going to cut off the corners and leave us with a nice round piece of material so we can then start machining our V carving. So right now we're using our end mill to cut away those corners. And you'll see that the headstock, as I referred to earlier, has a motor in, is just turning that ever so slightly, bit by bit, so we start to get that rounding effect on our blank. And there we are, there's the finished result, a nice smooth blank. And as always, we clean up after ourselves. 
and we're just sizing this up for the next part of the toolpath. So here's the toolpath. Again, we check our toolpath before we run them. Always good to uh, check on those before we run them. As they say, <laughs> measure twice, cut once, very similar over here. And now we're just checking the size of our tool and we're gonna make sure that we change our tool safely in just a moment. And there we go, it's a nice big V bit. So we're gonna get a lot of detail out of that, but also removes material very quickly as well. So you can see here, Becky is safely moving the tool. And you've got soft, the soft padding was underneath, was there to where the, where the other tool was removed. So that if it does drop, at least it drops onto a soft surface and doesn't break. So again, we make use of the touch plate. And then we'll move our tool into the correct position as we've established earlier. And now is the time for the final cut. So this is the actual V-carve cutting now, and it's gonna start cutting out the faces. You can see the small details of the face being cut out as we speak. An interesting thing to note here is that there's still a lot of blank material left at either end of our material block. And we did have a little bit of chipping. You might be able to see it on the very edge there, because, but because the tool is so big, we're able to get away with it. If it was a smaller tool though, however, you might want to take into account that extra material and maybe do a profile pass or get rid of some of that material beforehand because it's likely or potentially likely that you could break a tool if it was smaller. But we were able to get away with it in this scenario because we were using a larger tool. And now you can see our designs really coming together. Now you can start seeing some of the more details. There was a sad face, there's a happy face. And you can see that we uh, have the grain actually following the design, which is quite nice. You'll see in a moment that the grain actually follows the plume that we designed earlier as well. And it's giving it a nice effect. So we safely remove the material and this is the result. And I think that looks really, really great. And as you can see here, I'm discussing with Greg that the grain has managed to follow the eyes and the plumes here. And I think that gives it a really nice effect. So we remove that extra block of material that we will put, put into the chuck and then we start cleaning up the actual totem itself. So getting rid of some of that extra wood that's left over. And then we're going to seal it. We're going to use some varnish to start sealing it a generous amount, as you can clearly see. And then I start using a smaller brush in just a moment to fine detail that a little bit as well. And there we are, and I think that looks really, really nice. And this is my very first rotary project, and this is very beginner friendly, so I hope you also have a go at this one as well. Okay, everyone, so this is the finished result that we've got over here. So this is our V-carved Tiki Totem Pole, and I think it's turned out quite great. Now, there's a couple of things that would have changed with in regards to our tool pass. So as you can see over here, we've got these edges over here, and that's because when you V-carve, in a rotary toolpath, what's gonna to happen is it's gonna to come to a point because you've got two faces. You've got a face on this side and you've got a face on this side. So what that means is that the V-carving is gonna go up to that bounding box that's set up in the job uh, toolpath, if you remember, and it comes to a point like this. So it makes this kind of uh, V-shape, essentially, that comes out the side here. And so what I did to try and deal with that, I put some diamonds in here to cut that in to make it look a bit more natural. Put some circles at the top here. But the issue that I ran into is that I got a little bit of chipping. And the reason I got a bit of chipping is because I should have machined those side bits first. Because it's at a point, when the tool engages that point, you can risk some chipping there. And you can also see I've got a little bit of chipping at the bottom here. And that's because I didn't take into account the extra material that I had with the stock. So what you could do to get around that is perhaps create a cove. So you can create a cove around the bottom here with a profile toolpath, get rid of the majority of that material first, and then you've got a nice safe area for you to machine onwards from as well. Uh, similarly, what you could also do is I've got this uh, a totem pole over here that Becky made. Now this is done with this, a different style. And what we've done here is, is a 2D pocket toolpath all the way around and then just machined on the lines for the faces for the totem pole here, which is just giving you an idea of something else that you could do. So if you don't wanna go with a heavy V carving like this, you could do something like this and you could create 
less deep detail, but you can still get quite a cool result out of it as well. And there's also some more utilizations for this as well. So what you could do is instead of having it as a decorative piece, you could also make it into something like a cup. If you shorten the design down and you cut it say midway, you can pocket out the top of it and you can make a cup out of it or a pen holder, for example. I was also chatting to Becky, as you all, you all know Becky, and I was saying, if you were to make a pen holder out of it, you could even do something uh, cheeky like cut a pocket here, put a pencil sharpener in there, and then you've got a pencil sharpener in there for your pen holder and your pencil, say, as well. So there's a lot of applications for it, and I think you can make some really cool designs with this. It doesn't have to be a tiki totem pole either. What you could do is make some decorative, uh, decorative pillars, for example, or you can make something like a table leg. Or, for example, if you have wooden banisters in your home, you can make a banister using the V-carving toolpath and you can make plenty of these to just kind of go along it and make some intricate patterns. If you recall in my PowerPoint at the very start, I mentioned a project where one of our users made some walking sticks. And if you look at the walking sticks, they've got details intricately made all, all the way along with a handle and the bottom of it are different, but also all the way in the middle is different. And you can use that, for example, in a banister. And you can see that it's actually quite an easy project. This is actually my very first Vectric project. So and this is a V carving and it looks quite complex, but it's really not. If you look at the design and how I made it, you can see you can make this within 20 minutes and then you can get onto your machine and you can be done within two hours and you've got something like this. So I hope you all have a go at making one of these yourselves. Please give us the feedback as well. If you'd like to see more of this stuff in future, we'd love to know about it and we'd love to see your design. So please make sure you utilize the Vectric forum. It's there for that reason. There's some great users on that forum who made some great designs. As I showed you earlier, the puppy design and by Brian, and we've got Dale's Walking Sticks. There's plenty of other Rotary projects on there as well. Some amazing stuff on there. So I highly recommend if you've got any great ideas already or if you make anything after this UGM, go whack them on the forum because we'll certainly be happy to see them as well. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to seeing what you make. Cheers.